Ehud Olmert becomes Israel's first ever prime minister to be sentenced to jail time as an Israeli court reveals a verdict of six years over corruption charges. A new round of negotiations between Iran and Western powers over Tehran's nuclear program opens in Vienna as Saudi Arabia invites the Iranian foreign minister for an official visit. And a day after the controversial eastern Ukrainian referendum, Russia said it expects pro-Moscow rebels to comply with the OSCE roadmap for resolving the Ukraine crisis. Welcome back to the news today. This is the Daily Debate. The battle against government corruption in Israel reached new highs this morning when former Prime Minister Ehud Olmert was sentenced to six years in prison over a bribery affair. Is this the beginning of a big change in the way Israeli politicians handle themselves or is it just one case that eases the court's hand helping others get away with it. Joining me tonight is Uri Mizgab from Haaretz Daily Newspaper, Haaretz journalist and blogger. Good evening. Good evening. And also Amir Oren, defense and government analyst for Haaretz Daily Newspaper. Good evening. Thank you very much for coming. Good evening to you. Were you surprised by the sentence, gentlemen? I um, uh, put my bet on um, a lesser verdict, uh, four years and eight months uh, to be exact. Because I you were really specific, I understand. Yes, okay. because I figured that he was going to get four years for this offense and eight months for the 60,000 shekels, which is another uh, count in, um, in the trial. But uh, apparently, uh, Judge Rosen decided to go for a round number, and one cannot uh, fault him. So uh, it was a slight surprise. But um, it seems to be the right verdict, nevertheless. Do you agree that it was the right verdict? Because I see you a little bit angry. I'm angry every time I remember the real crime, the real felony that Erwin Olmer, as prime minister, was supposed to stand to court, to my opinion, in Israel. And that's the horrible second Lebanon war. I'm not angry about this verdict. I do agree that there was a slight surprise, but that's only because we're getting to know a new judge in the in the arena judge rosen we, we're still getting to know this guy he was very severe on the verdict he was even more he called him traitor today this yes. is a big word to use in israel usually it's saved only for uh, let's say uh, terrorists who are people or people who are let's say are engaged with uh, problems in intelligence. Let's yes, put white, it in one white way collar or crime uh, was usually looked upon more leniently there were several exceptions in the 1970s when there was uh, some atmosphere right after the Yom Kippur War of putting our house in order. But in recent years, uh, even though the uh, Supreme Court tried to instill some norms of propriety, l lesser courts, lower courts, used to, uh, uh, to give uh, defendants uh, lesser sentences. So the attorney general got uh, almost uh, dispirited and uh, in some cases um, uh, closed the files rather than submit them to trial and face another defeat. So this is probably a turning point in the Israeli system's fight against high-level corruption. You know, some people uh, said today that uh, the sentence was too harsh. The sentence, he was too hard on Ehud Olmert, uh, maybe because he was prime minister, maybe because he is a public figure, to let the others see what will happen if they will think about corruption. But it's not, because it's not the only case. Now, the opposite idea should be held. If, if he's the prime minister, then he should be punished more than other people. But I've got to say something about the turning point that my colleague Amir is talking about. I'm still hesitating. Is it a turning point or is it just a strange animal, this Judge Rosen? Is it a case of the busters have changed the rules or is it just one buster? Because other, other judges were handling Olmert very easily, very friendly in the other cases. And I'm still curious to know where we're going from here. I, it seems that Ehud Olmert, uh, even if he will go and will appeal about the sentence, it seems that he's going to spend the, the next few years in, in and out from court and maybe in and out from uh, jail. 
Uh, that seems to be the case because he still has another investigation pending, uh, which in all probability will also uh, result in charges of uh, obstruction of justice, um, which is even um, more severe, more severe. Than, than the corruption case. He still has uh, two appeals pending, not by himself, but by the prosecution regarding uh, earlier acquittals. And there, too, he will probably uh, lose one of the uh, appeals, if not uh, both of them. So, yes, you're right. Uh, he still has at least uh, three cases um, which he still faces, plus this one when he goes to the Supreme Court. And maybe he can't lose them all, but he will surely not win them all. Yes. There's a slight, a slight chance for a huge drama that will destroy the, the, the supremacy of the, the, the law system in Israel, and, and that, if it does, wins all his appeals. It's even a nightmare to think about it. The message to the, Israel, to the Israeli public will be horrendous. But even, will it be a smart move to appeal? Because, you know, if he will go to the Supreme Court, then the recordings of Shula Zakin, his secretary, his chief of staff, will be put out and that the chief recorded him about the bribery and maybe he will be doubled because Shlomo Ben Isli, uh, who was part of the Shas party, mm -hmm. just got tripled the sentence when he went to the Supreme Court. That's true. Um, Olmert doesn't have a real option of not appealing. He cannot let it stand because that would mean that in 45 days he's going to jail. And uh, for him, uh, it stands to reason to put it off um, as, um, as much as he can. Maybe there will be a new state president who will give him clemency. Maybe we will have a peace agreement in which everyone will go free. But in addition to that, what you just, I love it when you're what you just mentioned <laughs> uh, regarding uh, Shula Zaken, his former secretary, uh, this coming Thursday, uh, the uh, prosecution is going to come to the same Judge Rosen and sing Shula Zaken's praises and tell the judge that even though for the last two years she misbehaved, as of late, she gave new evidence against Olmert in this particular case as well as in others. If that doesn't convince the judge, when the appeal comes to the Supreme Court, they will also uh, use it. So in any event, uh, Olmert uh, would have no control over it. Uh, he should appeal, uh, looking at it from his perspective. You know, I I'm trying to think about, let's try to play a game. Um, let's try to think that uh, maybe Olmert doesn't, is not, is not the one to blame. Maybe the one to blame is the municipal system. Maybe the one to blame is the Israeli education system. The, the lack of constitution in the, in the municipal system, in the government, that allows these kind of actions to actually happen. So you're happen. saying, you're actually saying that all the honest mayors are suckers, that all the honest citizens and elected officials and uh, city engineers and everyone else uh, who didn't put uh, their hand in the cookie jar. Do you know many uh, honest no, mayors no, in uh, you'll Israel? Have to excuse Even me in this, this uh, particular studio, there are two. You'll have to ex excuse me on this point. But you're not mayors. I don't want to play these games. There is a law book in Israel. This is not a case of gray, of, you know, of, of shades and lights. This is a clear cut verdict. We have to worship. A one brave so judge explain to me that what made is happening it. in Israel. How come we're talking about a finance minister? We're talking about uh, uh, we're talking about a mayor. We're talking about prime minister. We're talking about ministers who are getting into jail for corruption uh, accusations. How come something is wrong in our system? May, so, no, maybe it's not the system, but there is a similarity between the political mind and the criminal mind. Uh -huh. It takes the same sort of person to try, an ambitious person, to try and reach the very top in the political profession. And sometimes they bend the rules and they get away not with murder, but with corruption. And so uh, they get so self-assured that they are certain that they will never get caught, which is when they are. Again, I'm worried today because I 
bear in mind the very, I can't say, uh, excuse me for the word, outrageous verdict that Olmen got on the Rishon Tours story, which to my opinion, and I read the verdict, the verdict. to my sorrow twice, there was, and, and everything was there, everything was there to convict him. And still three very respectable Jerusalem judges let them get away. So we don't have to play games. The danger of guilty, corruption yeah. is here. But, but there is an explanation for this inexplicable uh, verdict in Jerusalem. Those three judges, led by uh, a now retired uh, president of the court, Musi Arad, didn't want to be the first mm. to, to, to convict and a, sentence an ex-prime ex minister. Ex minister. And they knew that the Supreme Court might mm. then take their own uh, verdict and uh, perhaps overturn it. So Sheer bravery. Your, <laughs> so let me take you to your home field. And, uh, you know, we are talking, you mentioned prime minister, and we are talking about a prime minister. One of the only people who hold all the biggest secret of Israel, he is going to get into jail. This is a very sensitive issue. He's going to be like everyone, sitting with everyone. This is severe. How come a prime minister can be sitting with us, for example, and we know that he's holding all the secrets of the state of Israel. But Lucy, you must understand the subtext to your question. Does that mean that the prime minister and perhaps a defense minister and some of the top generals and security officials get immunity the moment they are exposed to secrets because it will not be safe. So what do you do? What do you do in this case? Yes, do you get you him exactly into an isolated do. place? He is a very warm and uh, a social person. He'll have new friends there. He won't be sitting with you because you're not a criminal. He will be sitting with other white-collar uh, criminals, and he will But do we sentence. want him to sit with white-collar criminals, or maybe he should be isolated from the rest this, this of really, the regular criminals who are sitting in jail? This really um, is not such a central question, because ways can be found that in a detention facility or in some other um, uh, jail rather than prison, uh, a certain prisoner can be kept. And there were cases in Israel, prisoner X cases, where people were kept isolated. And if this is the problem, then the prison service will assign additional, board, additional prison guards to, to make sure that no one with a hostile intent uh, tries to milk his secrets out of him. This should not be a pretext for keeping him out of jail. Sadly, I have a solution. He can share a cell with the former president of Israel, Mr. Moshe Katsav, which I think when they were even in office at the same time. So there's no point, there's no problem of immunity. Yeah, they there can share there is a problem because uh, Katsav is religious, while Olmert, at least up to now, has not been. Uh, maybe now he will get some religion. Yeah, but this, is this is in the, in but you Israel. know, this is the system in Israel, one Ashkenazi chief rabbi and one Oriental or Sephardi. So um, this, this could be a solution. You know, I have to tell you, gentlemen, that I am worried about the future, maybe, of politics in Israel today after this verdict. And, and uh, what is the message today? Why? Why? You should be you should glad. Be optimistic you, as a as, uh, former, as former you know, prime minister. I, I'm, 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 I'm worried because does it, first of all, I'm ashamed. And second, I have to say that it's uh, very worrying that uh, the phrase that all the Israelis are saying, all politicians are corrupted. No, it's no, no. True. I, I beg to differ. I beg. Uh, to use another former prime minister, Margaret Thatcher, um, when uh, during the Falkland uh, War, she said, rejoice, rejoice. Why, why should you be sad if Israel is cleaning its house? putting its house in order. You don't see any other politicians, any other prime ministers uh, uh, getting the same sentence, the same verdict. And this should be uh, a good start. And if some other uh, politicians uh, had criminal intentions and uh, would now be deterred, or uh, alternatively, if some criminals would not enter politics for fear of getting got, so much the better. I've got to tell you something about, the, about this current case, the Holy Land. Even the name is so symbolic. We have 
We have a huge statue of corruption standing at the skyline of Jerusalem. I wish it could be bombed and, you know, taken away, but it's there. And that will be a reminder. It's always there. We all have seen it through the years. Everybody that drove underneath Holy Land it's buildings honest. knew that something but, was but, thinking uh, But there. one should also add... Do you know how, do you, do but you one, one should add one note regarding this Holy Land uh, uh, building, uh, where at least one Supreme Court justice uh, yeah. lives, al along with several other uh, high-priced lawyers. Uh, yeah. People who reside there say that this is the best place in Jerusalem because you don't see Holy Land <laughs> from it. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you very much for this. Just uh, uh, make sure that when you're seeing the Holy Land project, six buildings, maybe it's one year for each building. Thank you very much for coming to the studio. We're going out for a small break, two minutes break, and then we will be back with I24 News one-on-one. -on -one. Don't go anywhere.